The mechanical bosses in Terraria are usually the first bosses the player encounters in hard mode. They drop the materials needed to craft hallowed gear and set you up for harder bosses in mid hard mode and late hard mode. The three mechanical bosses are the Destroyer, Skeleton Prime, and the Twin. The Destroyer is the mechanical boss like the Eater of Worlds. It's also famously known to be the easiest mechanical boss, one of the easiest bosses in all of Terraria even, because of how easily it can be cheesed. Then we have Skeleton Prime and the Twins. While they're both difficult fights in their own way, I like to fight the Twins first, because the Souls of the Knight can be used to make some great weapons to use against Skeleton Prime like the Optic Staff. Fighting Skeleton Prime before the Twins will allow you to obtain the Souls of Fright, which are nearly useless and only really needed for the Drax and Pickaxe Axe. In terms of general strategy, the Destroyer is very vulnerable to piercing weapons, since it's so long. That's what she said! <laughs> if you're a melee or ranger, after beating the Destroyer, you can use Souls of Might to make the Light Discs or Mega Shark, both amazing weapons for the Twins and Skeletron Prime. Let's quickly cover some of the best armor, weapons, and accessories for each class to beat the mech bosses. In terms of armor, you should use titanium or adamantite armor. If you feel confident enough, you could possibly get away with using mithril or calcum armor. If you want, since the destroyer is so easy, you could beat him enough times to make full hallow armor, which would be approximately 3 times. The hallow armor is great and arguably better than the titanium and adamantite, mainly because of its amazing set bonus. Regardless, titanium, adamantite, and hallow ore are the best armors, and in some situations, if you're good enough, you could pass with mithril or calcum. In terms of accessories, some good ones for any class are the Charm of Mitts, Wings, Frozen Turtle Shell, Shield of Cthulhu for the dodge ability, Yo-Yo Bag, Worm Scarf, and Terra Spark Boots. Let's cover some weapons for each boss. Number 1, the Destroyer. For melee, some of the best weapons to use are the Icicle, Mushroom Spear, and Shadow Flame Knife. Generally, any piercing and ricochet weapons will be great. Yo-Yos aren't that effective unless you use the Yo-Yo Bag. For Rangers, the Daily Stormbow mixed with Jester or Holy Arrows is the best and will shred the Destroyer. The bow is dropped with a 25% chance from Hallow Mimic, which you can spawn by crafting and putting a key of light in an empty chest. Otherwise, the Titanium or Adamantite Repeater is a great mix with the same arrows. For gun users, the Onyx Blaster and Clockwork Assault Rifle with Crystal or High Velocity Bullets, or Dart Pistol and Rifle with Crystal or Cursed Darts is great. Icor darts are decent, but remember that the destroyer is immune to the Icor debuff. For mages, the Crystal Vile Shard is the best option because of its piercing. It's obtained the exact same way as the Daedalus Stormbow and is worth it. Other great weapons are the Nimbus Rod, Clinger Staff, and Life Drain. The Muter Staff will also shred the destroyer, however, it's notoriously known to drain mana at a crazy high rate. For summoners, the Firecracker and Cool Whip are the best. The Pirate Staff, Sanguine Staff, and Blade Staff are also some of the best summons to use. Number 2, the Twins. At this point, I'm going to assume you've beaten the destroyer. The Shadow Flame Knife, Yellets, and Light Discs are the best melee weapons to use. For Rangers, the Daedalus Stormbow is still a decent option, or the Hallowed Repeater with Holy, Icor, or Cursed Arrows. Other great weapons are the Mega Shirt with Crystal Bullets and Shadow Flame Bow. For Mages, the Crystal Serpent is an awesome choice and can be even used to beat Plantera, the boss after all the mechanical bosses. It's obtained from fishing pretty easily as well. The Golden Shower is also easy to craft and amazing because of its ability to inflict the Icor debuff. Other good magic weapons are the Spirit Flame, Crystal Storm, and Sky Fracture. Lastly, for summoners, the best weapons are the Durandal, Firecracker, and Cool Whip, and the Sanguine Staff is the best summon staff. It's dropped from fishing in the Blood Moon after defeating the Dread Nautilus boss. And now, number 3, Skeletron Prime. For melee, the Yellows with the Yo-Yo Bag is definitely the best choice. He has a ton of health and needs to be beaten before dawn, otherwise he will enrage and instantly kill you. As I mentioned earlier, the Yellows Yo-Yo is fairly simple to obtain and has a very high DPS. Other decent weapons, however, are the Chain Guillotines and Light Disc. For Ranger, it's the same weapons as the Twins. The Hallowed Repeater is the best and should be paired with Icor Arrows to deal more DPS by lowering Skeletron Prime's defense. The Mega Shark, Uzi, Daedalus Stormbow, and Onyx Blaster are also great picks. For Magic users, the Crystal Serpent is best. The Golden Shower should also be used in tandem with it to inflict Icor. Other great picks are the Sky Fracture and Meteor Staff if you've got the Mana Flower and tons of Mana Potions to use. For Summoners, the Sanguine Staff is good, as well as the Optic Staff, which requires Souls of Sight from the Twins. The Durandal, Firecrack, and Cool Whip are the best whips in that order. And now let's quickly go over some last general tips for each boss. For the arena, make sure that you have Heart Lantern set up and Manu statues for mages. Once you beat one mechanical boss, the Steam Bunker will be allowed to move in. She sells the Blendomatic crafting station at all times for 10 gold. Its sole purpose is to make asphalt blocks by mixing stone and gel. This special type of ground dramatically increases the speed of the player quickly when run upon, and it's great to use as the base of your arena. The speed boost will help a lot with dodging of the attacks for future bosses like the Twins and Skeletron Prime and even Empress of Light and Moon Lord late game. Next, make sure you have full life fruits. If you're having trouble fighting them, craft a few Splunker potions since they highlight nearby life fruits on the screen. The metal detector dropped from the very rare enemy Nymph in the caverns is also very helpful since it will tell you when life fruits are nearby, but not the direction. If you're also having a hard time finding and mining early hard mode ores like titanium and adamantite, Splunker potions will be your best friend. In terms of each boss, the destroy is pretty easy to beat and can be cheesed. If you don't know what strategies I'm talking about, check out my destroy guide linked in the description or other ones on YouTube. For the twins, there are a few tips that if you follow, you'll have a much easier time fighting them. Firstly, don't activate their second form at the same time. 
The second form happens at 40 health. It's a lot easier to beat Spasmatism first and then retinate it afterwards. Spasmatism will charge at you and is more aggressive. He sprays you with cursed flames and deals very high damage. On the other hand, Retinaza will occasionally charge at you, but will be more passive most of the time, shooting you with lasers from a distance away. Overall, target and focus on fully beating Spasmatism first, then focus on Retinaza since he's easier. For Skeletron Prime, if you're using very high damage weapons, it may be better to beat the head right away before taking down the arms. Otherwise, focus the laser and bomb arms first, and then the saws, and then the head. Be very careful with spinning head attack, as it deals very, very, very high damage in all modes. And that's it. This was a brief guide on almost everything you need to know about fighting the mechanical bosses to make your life a lot easier. Comment down below who's your favorite boss and why. Remember to like and sub, and I'll see you guys in the next video.